Well, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing this morning? Hey, Amen. We're so good to have y'all all here this morning. You know, I was, uh, you know how sometimes we wake up with a scripture on our heart, and uh, I have one on mine this morning that I'll be sharing with you. But before we get started on that, I just want to say I'm so grateful for all of you being here this morning. You know, we're living in a time where we're going, going through much in the world that we live in. There's a lot going on. And uh, God's word is so comforting at times like that. Amen. There's the scripture found in John uh, chapter 14. And when I get ready to read this scripture, it's like, well, this, you know, everybody knows this scripture, but no, 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 no. Let this scripture really speak to your heart this morning. Scripture goes like this. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Let me just say to you this morning that Jesus Christ himself at times had a troubling spirit. In other words, his spirit was troubled. I don't know if y'all remember the time where he was talking to him about Judas betraying him. And it says he was troubled in his spirit. Sometimes we get troubled in our spirit, but Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because he says, believe in God. You believe in God, believe also in me. And guess what? The Father's house, there are many mansions. Amen? Amen. I tell you, we need to rejoice in that this morning. Amen. Somebody say, where are you going when I'm going to the Father's house? I'm going to the Father's house. Amen. Matter of fact, we just pilgrim passing through, and one day... We all going to gather together at the Father's house all right. and have a great reunion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us go before the throne of grace this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for this time that we have come here in this place once again. We give you all the praise and the glory just for what you are doing, what you have done, what is being done right now in our lives. Father, we thank you that you always come through every time and that you always see us through every situation. We know that you are the God who's able to do abundant above all that we can thank and ask. So we come this morning with our hearts full of thanksgiving, full of joy, because we serve you, O oh God, who is a mighty God who loves us so much. So, Father, as we lift our voices to praise you this morning, may you receive these praises, O oh God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's stand our feet this morning. Amen. Let everybody stand. Amen.
You can have my heart You can have it all Laying down my life No matter what the cause You can have you can have my heart You can have it all Laying down my life No matter what the cost Only Jesus All my days No greater treasure no sweeter name The cross before me The world behind I have decided Only Jesus Only Jesus No turning back I have decided Only Jesus No turning back No turning back I have decided Only Jesus No turning back no turning back I have decided Only Jesus No turning back No turning back No turning back I have decided Only Jesus Turning back, I have decided only Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided only Jesus.
is holding holding nothing holding nothing is that your heart's cry this morning holding nothing holding nothing with holding nothing holding nothing holding nothing with holding with holding nothing
good, Lord. So good, Lord.
better than all the others that I've seen. Yes, I'm breathing deep. All of your goodness, your loving kindness to me. Now I can see. Your love is better than all the 
in that song uh, it says uh, it's now I can see your love is better now I can which, which leads me to believe that there was some kind of experience something that happened that, that caused me to now be able to see and I wonder how many times throughout our walks with the Lord that we 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 rob ourselves of opportunities of revelation like that of now I see you differently Lord now I see you deeper Lord and 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 I think that sometimes we get comfortable sometimes we we call it good sometimes we get complacent sometimes we reach a plateau and I've matured enough and I've learned enough and I've been with the Lord enough that now I understand that we rob him of moments of, hey, I want to show you more. Hey, that's, it's deeper than what you know. You could spend every minute of every day of your life studying God, studying his goodness, studying his grace, studying his mercy, and it would just be the tip of the iceberg of who he actually is. And so, as we're in this moment, can I challenge us to not miss it? Can I challenge us to humble ourselves and allow the Lord to show us something new, to have that revelation like the song talks about of, Lord, now I see you differently. Lord, now I understand more than I did when I walked into this room this morning. So as we go back into that song, can that be our heart? Can that be our posture? Can that be our prayer? Lord, 
in this moment father i want to see the new side of you father lord i want to see deeper father into what i already know father would you help me to understand father would you help me to press in lord would you help me to to humble myself father to cast aside ego to cast aside i know this much to cast aside i've been walking with the lord for this long lord we want to know you better in 2023 father we want to know you better in this moment lord so as we go back into this song did you just press in did you just press in your love is better than all the others that i see i'm breathing
desires for us just to to come to him to draw near with with boldness and yet the innocence of a child sitting in their father's lap just loving and being loved with no condemnation is for me oh, 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 oh. 
so much sweeter than anything I've tasted. Wanna know your heart. Wanna know your Pastor Glenn talked about uh, the Lord going to make a place for us. <laughs> and one day, all our tears will be wiped away. It's gonna be worth it all. It's gonna be worth it all. When I see your face. Father, we feel your presence here this morning, Lord. Oh, Lord, how much we love you, Lord Jesus. We want to be so pleasing in your eyesight, Lord God. Knowing that we're not perfect, Lord Jesus, but we're striving for perfection, Lord God. Lord, you know us. You know our insides and our outs, Lord Jesus. You know our imperfections, Lord God. You know our needs and our wants, Lord God. And you know our longing for you, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord God. And continue to hold us in your loving arms, Lord God. Just wrap your arms around each and every one of us right now, Lord Jesus, as we feel your presence, Lord Jesus. As we acknowledge and, and love on you, Lord God, as you love on us, Lord. We thank you for all things, Lord Jesus. We thank you for just waking us up this morning, Lord God, to see another beautiful day that you have created, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' holy name, everyone says, Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Good morning. At this time, if we will, we'll greet each other. We will shake hands, give someone a kiss, a hug, and uh, then we'll reconvene. Thank you.
Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo, greetings, greetings, greetings. Go church. Amen. 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 Wasn't that wonderful? Amen. This morning, I would like to welcome... Uh, first of all, Go Church, thank you all for being here once again in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord is always good, and we always enjoy each other's company. Amen. Amen. Welcome. We want to welcome those that's on YouTube, that's live streaming with us, Instagram and Facebook. We ask that you would subscribe to our channel and also hit the like button and get Isaiah off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amen. At this time, if we have any visitors, any first time visitors, we would like to say welcome, welcome, welcome to Go Church. Sit back and enjoy the word of God. Our pastor, Edgar, always bring a wonderful word from the Lord, strictly from the word of God. And just sit back and relax and enjoy that word. As I always say, take that word for yourself, not looking to your brother or sister to your right or to your left. Apply that word to your own life. That's what it's supposed to do enhance your own life amen so do that amen we have changed for mission and what we do we collect for turkey and belize here at this church and we put it in our flower box on the table to my right and your left and if you will if you have any coins nickels dimes pennies quarters even dollars we'll take put it in that box and we'll distribute it to the different countries that's uh, in need of belize or turkey amen Amen. We have jackets. We have jackets for sale and they are $55. And if you would like to uh, buy a jacket, please uh, go on the QR code, scan the QR code and order your jacket. And like I always say, if you look on that jacket, they have a front and back logo. And it's a ministering tool that you can minister because sometimes when people see a uh, logo, they'll look at it and they'll say, well, what is that all about? And then you can minister to that person with that jacket. All right. So let's use that jacket as a ministering tool. Amen. So purchase your jacket. All right. You know that we are currently in a 21 day fast and we're still in that uh, day of fasting and praying. And so if you would scan the QR code and we'll give you some daily guides and some scriptures to uh, some prayer points also. And if you would do that, and that fast in prayer is lasting from January the 9th to the 29th of January. So please join us for that 21 day of fasting and prayer. Amen. Amen. We have water baptism. We know that happened on February the 5th. will be happening on February 5th. And if anyone would like to be baptized, please get with our Pastor Edgar or Bianca, his wife, and uh, request to be baptized. That's on February the 5th. And he also will give you the location of that baptism, if you would ask. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to be celebrating our fourth anniversary. That's going to be on February the 26th. And we'll have more information uh, on that pretty soon, time and everything in place. And we'll be getting back with you on that. But mark your calendars for February the 26th for the fourth anniversary. All right? Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, I would like to leave you all with some encouraging words. And it's going to come from Isaiah 58, 6 through 7. If uh, Brother Fred have that up on the monitor there and jot it down. And it says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? And you know, we are in that time of fasting. He says, is this not the time that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. Is this, excuse me, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring your house, yet you, excuse me, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? Amen. When you see the naked, that you would cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Amen. And what I want you all to take out of this and also to remember is uh, we must help those that are less, less fortunate than ourselves. Amen. By feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, and clothing the naked. And that's what I would like you to take home with you and to remember that. All right. Amen in your time of fasting and prayer.
All right, at this time, we will go to our tithes. And you know, at this church, we have four ways of giving. We do it in person. And our usher will have a basket, and he'll pass it around. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. And on that envelope, put your name and the amount. Uh, and also put on your check of money order, Tomball, Texas, because that's where we at, the Tomball campus, and we wanted to get credit to this, to this campus. Amen? And Brother Lee will have the basket. All right? Or you can go online. And if you go online, you go to gochurch.org slash give, and that will be uh, online, or you can do it by your phone. Now, I have been giving you on the text eight. Four three two. That it's not the complete text. So if you didn't text your your ties and offer in, I'm going to give you the correct text. And the text is eight four three two one. That's it. Eight four three two one. And Fred, remind me, I was not putting the one on there, so we might not have been getting no ties from you all. But do that by phone, okay? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> My mistake. Praise the Lord. All right. Or we can do it the old-fashioned way by mail. We can do the PO Box one two six one at Katy, Texas seven seven four nine two. That's if you want to mail it in. And on your on your memo section of your money order or your check, please put the Tumball Campus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. And I would like to close out in the prayer right quick. Amen. Well, Father, you have done it again. You reminds us even when we make these little uh, little small mistakes, Lord God, you bring it to remembrance. And I thank you for that, Lord God. You're a good God. You're merciful and you're kind. And I thank everyone that was able to give an offering this morning. I thank you for it. And I ask the Lord to bless you. And I also ask the Lord to bless those that was not able to give this morning because he know our heart, Lord. And I ask him to continue to bless each and every one of us, one of us this day, Lord, and continue to do the will of God, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank Pastor. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Good morning, family. <sighs> I feel grateful this morning. Um, know about you guys. Um, I'm grateful. Um, not grateful because of this, but uh, you guys noticed uh, Shammy, Shammy is out of town, and, and, and uh, yeah, we our whole worship team wasn't up here, but I'm grateful that um, we have just gifted and talented people in the room that are able to step in and, and, and fill the role when needed, and so Rob, thank you so much, man, for doing that, for stepping up, and, and um, yeah, um, it's kind of tied together, right? So um, Shammy is not here because she's, her and her sister and a group of them are celebrating uh, her, her kind of bachelorette send-off type thing. And so, yeah, so they're out of town. Um, and so, which is good, well, not good. We miss them, obviously. Everybody say, aw. We miss them, right? But it's good because we have some things that we need to talk about that they don't need to be in the room for, okay? So, um, right, right. It's not bad, okay? I promise you, okay? Um, so, um, as you guys know, um, Shelly is getting married um, in February. I think it's like mid-February. And so, what we want to do as a church body is we want to bless uh, her and her husband, Anthony, as they go into the marriage, into their marriage. And so, we're looking to do this next Sunday. Everybody say next Sunday. So what we want to do is, is they have a registry online of things that they're needing kind of for their home or as they, you know, are starting to build their life together. And so um, we have that registry or we're also asking for gift cards, whatever you guys feel led to bring. If you want the registry, please get with me after service. I can get you the link. Um, that way you can order something and make sure that it's on from Amazon. So it'll be here like same day probably. So, um, so yeah, so you can be sure that um, next week we want to bring all those gifts together. We want to present those to them. It's a surprise, okay? So that's why I didn't want them to be in the room. So um, just be sure not to say anything. We want to surprise them and uh, we just want to pray for them as they are kind of entering this season of their lives. And so not season, but it's like a new phase right, rather, right? It's marriage is in a season. It's, it's, it's a whole thing, right? Okay. So I want to make that clear. Not a season. It's a... As they step into this new stage. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, and so if you could help us out with that, please, please um, get with me after service if you want that link. Or if you just want to bring gift cards, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Um, and so we just really want to bless them. Um, just They're not expecting this at all, so just want to bless their socks off next week. And so everybody good with that? Yeah. Everybody good? Amen. Amen. All right. So we are in week three of our series. Can anybody tell me what, it, what the title is without looking at the screen? 
You already looked at it. You already looked at it. Cheaters. The, we are in week three of our Becoming series, right? Becoming. Um, a couple weeks ago when we kicked off the series, we kind of set the stage for what this series was going to be. Um, and, and the end goal of this series is to encourage us to, to look within, right? It is an introspective time as we begin this year. Um, and so week one, we talked about becoming more like Jesus in 2023. We, we talked about what steps we could take to get there, what that looks like in our lives. Last week, we talked about what, are we, what we are trying to become as Go Church in 2023. Right? Where we talked about our goals, we talked about our vision, what we're trying to do this upcoming year. We talked about the portable that's going to be on that parking lot soon. Right? And so we're really excited for that. Um, and so today, um, we want to go back. Right? Last week, we, or we talked about us as a whole. This week, we want to go back to talking about ourselves individually. We want to be introspective again and um, outrospective, just regular spective. I don't know what you call that, but not just look within, but also look around us as well. Uh, of, of some things that we perhaps um, have let become blind spots in our lives as we look to become more like Jesus in 2023. And so today, the title of the message is Becoming Requires Shedding. Everyone say, requir becoming requires shedding. So what do we mean by becoming requires shedding, right? And so uh, I'll give you an example this morning. When a vice president becomes a full-blown president, right, he or she sheds himself or herself of the old title in order to embrace the new. Right, So they are uh, leaving behind their duties, their responsibilities, their old uh, life, their old schedule, their old uh, kind of load that they were carrying in order to pick up this new one, in order to grab something new. The old title no longer defines them. They're not a vice president anymore. They're a what? They're a president, right? And as I was preparing this message, um, I learned a lot about snakes and lizards, which I want to say, I want to just forget all of that. I hate snakes. I hate lizards. I, any of it, I just, it was more than I wanted to know, right? But you look at snakes, you look at lizards, right? Yeah, they're, they're not known for, but one of the things that they do that's common is they shed their skin, right? Right? I got a lot of looks in the room like, that's disgusting. Why are we even talking about this right now? Have you ever stopped to think about why a snake or a lizard sheds its skin? We all know that they do. We all, maybe you've, if you live out in the country, you've maybe seen some skin just lying on the ground. Maybe you've seen it, you've heard about it, you know about it, but do you know why? Do you know why? Um, I'll give you, there's two reasons this morning. Uh, a snake or lizard sheds its skin. Number one, because the skin doesn't grow with them. The skin does not grow. So you, you've had your same skin since you were five years old, right? That skin, not since you were five, since you were born, okay? I don't know why I said five years old. Anyway, but as you grow, your skin grows with you, right? I don't, I don't know if you've ever like woken up and there's just like an outline of skin on your bed that looks like you, like, no, that's not, we're, it's not how it works, right? Your skin grows with you. I mean, Sister LaVersi laughs, that's, that just warmed my heart, I don't know why. Um, your skin doesn't grow with you, right? Our, our, our skin grows with us, but that's not the case for a snake or for a lizard. Their skin does not grow with them. It, therefore, it needs a new skin in order to hold its new growth. Come on now. It needs new skin in order for it to hold its new growth. Another reason that a, a lizard or a snake sheds their skin is to rid itself of harmful parasites. Okay? All right science this morning, right? So that led me down a rabbit trail. What is a parasite? What, what does that mean? What does that entail? Let's define that this morning. A parasite is an organism that lives off of another living thing, okay? A parasite literally sucks the life from its host, right? Think of a tick. Think of, you know, something along those lines. Uh, in nature, trees have parasites, Animals and humans can have parasites living on their body, and this part is really gross, also in your body. So that's, bleh, right? So um, there, there's things like flies and, and lice and worms. There's all these different things, right, that, that are parasites. So a lizard, get this, sheds its skin because it outgrows its old skin. That's an important aspect for us this morning. It outgrows its old skin 
And it sheds its skin because it's cleansing itself of things that are not healthy. So let's apply this to our spiritual journey as believers, as we walk through 2023 together, right? As believers, we are called to discipleship. To discipleship, right? And that's just a a big, fancy Bible word that means we are to learn, we are to grow, and we are to become more like Jesus. We are to learn to grow, and to become more like Jesus. And, and as we journey on this faith walk, as we be, try to become more like Jesus, there are going to be some times when there's going to be some old skins in our lives that we are no longer going to need. There are going to be some things in our lives that are not healthy that we are going to have to let go of. Those parasites in our lives can be things like vices, they can be uh, entrapments, they can be addictions, they can be bad habits that we formed throughout the years. Those are kind of the obvious ones, but sometimes there's more subtle little parasites that we need to get rid of. This morning, did you know that your comfort zone can be a parasite for you? Watch your toes this morning now, come on. (laughs) These things can harm us and they can keep us from becoming more like Jesus, right? In order for us to become more like Jesus in 2023, there's going to be some things that we need to shed. There's going to be some things that we're going to need to let go of, right? Let's jump this morning to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Before we jump into the text this morning, I want to give us a little bit of background about Ephesians. Ephesians was written by Paul to the church in Ephesus, um, which is a city in modern-day Turkey. And, and the, book of Ephes, uh, the book of Ephesus, the book of Ephesians focuses on three main points. Okay, so if I had to just give you a nutshell of what Ephesians is about, these three things. Number one, Jesus has reconciled mankind back to the Father. Right, so Jesus made a way for us to be back into relationship with our Creator, with God, with the Father, right? Number two, Jesus unified all people in Him. Both, both uh, Jew and Gentile, he, he brought us together as one. He unified us, right? That's number two. And number three, as believers, we must live as new people. Shedding the old and clinging on to the new. Let's jump into Ephesians this morning. We're going to start in verse one. And it says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just like the rest of mankind. Right? And so uh, uh, this, is, this is kind of, uh, it, it, it is an applicable passage for everyone, right? We were at one point part of this, uh, uh, this group that it's referring to here, that, that gave in to our, our, our sinful desires, our sinful ways, our, our vices, right? That was all of us at one point or another, correct? Yeah, if you didn't say mm-hmm, then you, you we got to be a little more introspective this morning. We jump down a little further to verse 8. We see the powerful verse in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Not that they're not all powerful, but this one especially. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Your salvation, your way back to the Father could not be reached on your own. You needed somebody to step in and make a way for you to get back. You cannot save yourself. You cannot make yourself more like the Lord. You cannot make yourself more like Jesus. You needed somebody to step in and make a way for you. Right? It was not by our own works. It was salvation by grace, the word says. It was a gift of grace. Let's jump to chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 11. should just be the next page in your Bible. Chapter 4, starting in verse 11. And it says, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, and the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. All right, so this gives us the five-fold ministry. This is, uh, a church is healthy when all of these are operating together, right? But the, the interesting thing about those two verses, it doesn't, it doesn't say the, apostle, the, the, the five-fold ministry for them to be doing the work of the ministry. Our job is to equip you 
to do the work of the ministry, right? And so notice the progression here, right? We're going from sinners, we're going from caught up in our vices to now we are saved by grace to now we are stepping into doing the work of the ministry, right? Jump a couple verses down in verse 14. It says, so that we may, be no, may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Right, so that we may grow up. Another way, another way for us to say grow up in that passage is to become more like who? More like Jesus, right? Let's jump down a couple more verses, and this is the last time I'm going to have you jump down, I promise. Look at verse 22. It says, To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. We're talking this morning, let me remind us about shedding, right? About getting rid of the old, that verse, that passage, that last one that we just read could not be more clear. Verse 22, to put off your old self. To put it off. To no longer wear it like a coat. To take it off. Put it off. In order for us to become more like Jesus, we need to shed some old skin that can no longer grow with us. We need to rid ourselves of some parasites that are holding us back, that, that suck the life from us and cause us to be unhealthy and, and keep us back in our journey with Jesus. This could be sins, this could be people, these could be addictions, right? We talked about perhaps even our comfort zones that we need to move past. There was a man by the name of Leonard Ravenhill he was an evangelist that passed away in 1994, and he said this. He said, everyone wants to be clothed with power. Everybody agree with that statement? Everyone wants to be clothed with power, but no one wants to be stripped of self. Everyone wants to be clothed with power. We all want the power. We all want the authority, but none of us want to give up ourself. We sometimes look like this. We're unwilling to let things go. We're unwilling to strip things away or let the Lord strip things away from us. We're holding on tight. Right? We, we, we just want to add to what we already have. I don't want to shed anything. That doesn't work very well for me. That's uncomfortable. I don't really like to do that. But in order for us to wear our new growth that the Lord is calling us to in 2023... In order for us to wear that effectively and wear that productively, we're going to have to shed some things. We can't function like that. We cannot function like that. In order for you to become all who God has called you to be in 2023, you have to shed some things. And the question for us this morning is, what are the things that God is calling you to shed in 2023? Got real quiet in here this morning. What, what are the things that the Lord is calling you to let go of in 2023? What are the relationships that the Lord is asking you to step away from in 2023? I have two points for us this morning. Number one, becoming requires shedding the worm that you were. Before you grab your pitchforks, I'm not calling you a worm, okay? Let me, let me explain, right? Our slide of the butterfly shows the larva, the caterpillar, the, the, this worm-like creature. It, it begins like this and then it ends in this beautiful monarch butterfly that everybody wants to take pictures of and everybody wants to, wants to capture and wants to land on their finger. Nobody wants that first one to land on your finger. You're like, get this thing off me. I'm going to step on it for good measure afterwards. It, it, it sheds this worm, it sheds what it once was, this, this, this form here that can only crawl and transforms, transforms itself to become something that can fly, something beautiful. What does God want you to shed in 2023 in order for you to fly, in order for you to become and look more like him, right? To call somebody a worm is an offensive thing, right? right? Some of you maybe 
got offended when I said you got to you got to not be a worm this morning. <laughs> Don't be such a worm is, is not a nice term, right? That's not something that you're just, you can just say to somebody on the street and not have problems afterwards, right? It speaks of somebody that is unlikable. They have some attributes that are turnoffs to others that, that people notice about them that makes them not to want to be around this person. How many of us know some people that maybe are a little wormy, right? Don't be shy, right? We've all met some people like this, right? They, these people are often characterized as they're greedy, they're rude, they're self-focused, they're insecure, they're unkind, they're just straight up mean. Shall we go on? But here's the thing. The Bible speaks that we were all born with a sinful nature. We were all born with a sinful nature, a nature that causes us to look out for me. For myself. It's that I am number one. That it causes me to be selfish. To only look at myself. And, and how uh, everything affects me. We all have some attributes. That sometimes are a little bit wormy. If we can be honest. We all have some of that old skin. We all have some of that old man still. old Not old man. Like not wrinkly old man. But the old man. That we once were. Before Jesus. And sometimes this old skin, this old uh, man that we once were likes to hang on and likes to pop its head out, usually at the most inconvenient times. And this kind of uh, manifests itself in different ways. It could, it could be in our language, the way that we speak. Amen. It could be in our attitudes. It could be in our stinking thinking. It could be in, in, in our negativity. It could be in bad and learned behaviors from the past. It has different ways of manifesting itself. But all of us have some of this old skin. All of us have some, some form of the old man that we once were. That's why water baptism is such a powerful thing, right? Because it is uh, symbolically the old man going into the water dirty. And because of what Jesus did, we are redeemed and we are clean and we are whole. Right? That is our youth pastor of our Katy campus. He got baptized a couple years ago. And now, talking about that progression from earlier, he is leading our youth in the Katy campus, right? And so, that is, that is what we're called to do. But sanctification is an instant thing, right? It's instantaneous, right? The moment that we give our life to Jesus, we are sanctified. We are set apart. We, God sees us as spotless because Jesus paid the price for our sins. Right? Jesus paid the price for our sins. It's instantaneous. That, but the cool thing about sanctification is that it's instantaneous and that God sees us this way. But it's a process for us to actually live this thing out and look like Jesus. Right? Uh, it's progressive. We are on a journey of becoming more like Jesus. Shedding your old skin. Letting go of the old man. Uh, and clinging to the attributes of Jesus, to the fruit of who he is, is a lifelong process. We never just get there, right? It is something that we're constantly in process of. And this isn't something that we just slip into. This isn't an accidental thing. This isn't something that we just wake up and, oh man, I think I look like Jesus today. No, this is, it is, becoming more like Jesus is intentional. It is a journey of deliberate choices. This is something that you do on purpose. If you've just been waiting for maybe one day you're going to wake up and get it all right, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. You've got to wake up every day and make deliberate choices to, to, to look more like Jesus. It's a daily story of us choosing to grow, of putting off the attributes of the old man, of, of our wormy behaviors, and choosing to grab on to the new. Choosing to shed our old title and step into this title of, of son, of daughter, of, of a Christian, of, of being Christ-like. Yes. The sad thing is that some believers stay in this wormy behavior all of their lives. From the time that they accept Jesus into their heart to the time they are in the grave, there is no change. There is no progression. There is, there, is, there is nothing. There are attitudes, there are desires, addictions, greeds, and goals that never grow. 
They never desire to become more like Jesus and therefore they never fully fulfill their God-given purpose in this world. The word tells us that this journey is a spiritual battle. Right? In Ephesians chapter 6, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There's a spiritual battle that is happening. And becoming more like Jesus requires the shedding of the old skin. Requires letting go of the old man, of the attributes of the worm that hold us back. Perhaps as we're sitting here this morning, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about some things that you need to let go. Can I challenge us this morning to let him go this year? To give those things to the Lord. To walk with him through these things. I heard a, a description of Jesus this year, that, or a couple weeks ago, that, that just it hit me different for some reason. Jesus isn't... The type that is going to give you directions, close the door to the car, and just send you off. Like, good luck. Go do it. I've already told you what to do. The, the awesome thing about the God that we serve is that he'll give us directions. Hey, this is where I want you to go. This is what I want you to look like. He'll close the car door, and he'll get on the, on the other side with you and journey with you on these things. You are not in this thing by yourself. And, and, and he, as he's calling these things out in your life as he's tugging on your heart, as he's reminding you about perhaps different instances or areas in your life that he wants to work on this year. Can I encourage you this morning to let him do the work? To walk alongside him? To, to not be afraid? To, to not uh, uh, choose to, to, to walk away? To not let this year just become like all the other years, can we make this year an intentional one? Can we walk with the Lord on purpose? Can we make deliberate choices starting today? Becoming more like Jesus is to shed the attributes of the worm that we once were. And then number two, becoming requires shedding the cocoon that holds you back. Becoming requires shedding the cocoon that holds you back. All of us have attributes and areas in our lives that we've, we've addressed, right? Still need to become more like Jesus. Yeah. Let's just say that, that a lot of that old skin is gone, that a lot of the old man is behind us, that worminess is, is, is for the most part gone in your life, right? Let's say that you've been a believer for a while, but you just find yourself kind of stuck. You've, you've tried to be open and honest. You got close to somebody in the church and it backfired because they hurt you. You're just written off church as a whole. You've, you've tried small group, but that didn't work so well. You didn't feel like you fit in. They didn't quite get you. You tried to share the gospel and you were accused of being pushy or someone called you a religious freak and so you just never tried again. You tried to read your word, but you gave up in the first week. You tried to pray more, but for some reason you just kept falling asleep. Perhaps there's, a, 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 there's an anger issue. You've tried to fix it so many times. You've just reached a point where you're just settled with it. This is just who I am. I'm never going to change. Therefore, people just need to accept that this is the real me. There are vices in our lives there are sins in our lives and and perhaps we've we've gotten tired of trying and we've just thrown our hands up and says lord you you know i've tried i'm done things are going to change lord you're going to have to come down from heaven yourself and change me right because it's just not working for me can i tell us this morning perhaps we've wrapped ourselves in a cocoon perhaps we've become content to stay who we are. Our cocoons, right, they, they shield us from the feelings of failure. They, they, in our minds, keep us from getting hurt because that's a wall that I've built myself and I can control this situation. Because you just want to stop trying. But can I tell you that shield that you've put up for yourself, that cocoon that you've built for yourself is also trapping you from becoming who God has called you to be. 
It has caused you to just be content. It's caused you to be lukewarm. It's caused you to be casual. It's caused you to say things, uh, or it's caused you to approach Jesus like, I I just need to get enough Jesus to get me going, but I I don't really want the change that comes with it. I want the Jesus that's going to help me get through the week until I can make it back to church on Sunday, but I don't really want to change. I don't really want to address those areas of my life, those dark corners that I never want to look at or look into or address. And that causes us to not have real victory. We become casual. And I've got good news and bad news for us this morning. I'll give you the bad news first. Even if you're in this cocoon, even if you've built up these walls for yourself, people are still going to hurt you. People are still going to let you down. The world and the church is imperfect. It is full of imperfect people. It's full of people that are flawed. It's full of people that are wormy. That are still dealing with their old skin. The same way that you're still dealing with your old skin, they're dealing with theirs as well. People that are fighting their scars, that are fighting their hurts, that that are seeking to try to overcome them. But unfortunately, sometimes they kind of rear their ugly heads and we get to see those things. And we get hurt. People are going to hurt you. But here's the good news. Maybe this is good news. Maybe it's not. So it depends on how you see it. People are going to hurt you. But God is going to use those old skins of other people. Those, those hurts in their lives. Those imperfections in their lives. Those flaws that they are carrying themselves. God wants to use those things to perfect you. God wants to use those things to perfect you. And so I want to ask you this morning, will you walk in the fruit of Jesus? Will you live out forgiveness? Will you live out uh, walking alongside uh, like-minded believers? Will Will you walk alongside or will you respond just like the old man? Will you respond through the lens of your scars? Will you respond perhaps a little bit wormy? The church exists for us to be a school of learning and responding in a way like Jesus. But becoming requires us to shed the cocoon that is holding us back. That is keeping you content. That is keeping you lukewarm. That you feel like is keeping you safe, but it is keeping you from becoming who God has called you to be. I once heard a story of a baby eagle that was happy in his nest Life was good. Mama brought the food. He didn't even have to chew it. It was great. She came. She cleaned his nest. She did everything for him. The nest was comfortable, almost like his own little version of a cocoon, right? It was the perfect life. Then one day, Mama came, and she stood a little closer to him than usual. He wasn't really sure what was going on or why, but she just began to kind of nudge and nudge and nudge, and before he knew it, he was on the edge of this nest. Oh, Mama, what are you doing? What's, what's going on here, Mama? Can we talk about this? And she pushes him out of the nest. And he begins to fall down this mountain, and he is screaming. I don't know how eagles scream, or else I would do it for you, so <laughs> you missed out. I'm sorry. But he's freaking out, and then Mama swoops down, catches this little eagle puts him back in the nest, right back where he's comfortable. And I'm sure there was awkward conversations that happened after that, like, Mom, what was that? What happened? What, can we, what's going on here? But he was back in a place where he was comfortable, he was protected, and he was content. Right? Next day, Mama comes, and she stands close again and begins to nudge, begins to nudge, and begins to nudge. And again, he's falling out of the nest. And again, Mama swoops down, She catches him, puts him back in the nest. Finally, about the fourth day of her doing this, the little eagle's falling, and he's like, something's got to change here. I can't keep doing this, man. He's got to do something different here. So he spreads his wings, and he begins to soar. And as he begins to soar, he's above the trees. 
He's as high as the mountains, and it's just beautiful. It's breathtaking. It's gorgeous. It's majestic. Why would he ever want to go back to his nest? Why would he ever want to go back to this cocoon that he had for himself? I think sometimes we don't realize that our comfort can be a jail. Sometimes I think we, we, lose, we lose sight of the fact that our comfort can keep us from doing certain things. Perhaps 2023 is the year that God is pushing you out of your nest. When we choose to make daily deliberate choices to become more like Jesus, when we are growing into who God has called us to be, the cocoon does nothing for us but make us feel trapped. The cocoon is too restricting. There's no growth in the cocoon. You are no longer content in the nest. The, the old skins are too itchy and you just have to get rid of those things because becoming requires some shedding in our lives. Becoming more like Jesus requires us to leave the cocoon that kept us comfortable for so long. Can we not be believers that are just stuck there in that little green section? Can we not be believers that get stuck here? That we are too comfortable to do anything else? Things are fine here. Things are great. I have Jesus in my life, but are we growing? But are we growing? Becoming more like Jesus means shedding. It means getting rid of some things. It means letting go of some things. It means putting off the old man. It requires us to shed the old skin. It requires us to get rid of the attributes of the worm that are holding us back. And becoming more like Jesus requires us to leave the cocoon that has kept us content, that has kept us happy, that has kept us comfortable for way too long. And I have a stand to our feet this morning. And Shakespeare, would you mind? Can we just bow our heads this morning? There's no magical thing about us bowing our heads. There's nothing extra spiritual about it. This is just helps you concentrate, just you and the Lord. Blocks out distractions, blocks out what's going on around you. So can we close our eyes this morning? We focus on him.